If you use Data Studio, scorecards are a great way to communicate key information quickly, but it's not always obvious how to do that. I'm Amy Hebden with Paid Search Magic, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to format your scorecards exactly the way you want them to take your dashboard from data puke to actionable insights. So here we're looking at a page of a Data Studio report, and you can see I've already got a lot of scorecards set up here. Uh, if you don't know how to add a scorecard, I'll show you very quickly. We're just gonna go to add a chart, select scorecard. Now we might wanna change the metric, which I do, because we already have a clicks and this defaulted to clicks. So I'm just going to drag this over here. And then the way I'm going to change the metric that's displayed is I'm going to go to all available fields and type in what I want, which is going to be impressions. So I'm going to grab impressions and drag it over to the metric. And that's how I'm going to add a scorecard. It's really that easy. But there's more to do with scorecards than just display current data. Uh, as you can see over here, I've got a scorecard that is showing me a time, a time comparison and it's showing that it's up 17%. 17% from what? It doesn't actually say. So that's something we have to be careful of when we format our scorecards is we have to make sure that somewhere we are communicating what we're comparing it against. So if I wanted to go in to um, include it right within the scorecard, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on style. And you can see right here, a hide comparison label is automatically checked by default, but I can take that off. And once I remove it, you can see that it says it's up 17% from previous year. So that is a really great way to communicate uh, what it's compared to. Now, a lot of times if you have everything in a row, it you'll, you might want to just like say in text somewhere, say year over year rather than having this, you know, it's going to get redundant if we have to say it five or 10 times. But this is a way, especially if you have a single metric to compare it. Now, another thing we can do from the control panel for the, from the style panels, we could also choose to show absolute change rather than the percentage. So the way I'm gonna do that is show absolute change. So you can see it's up 54,000. Now I don't love, well, let's round it to 55, right? But I don't love a couple of things about this particular uh, scorecard. One of which is that I don't love that it says all conversion value. I'd much rather it say revenue. So I'm going to go ahead and click into um, the metric and I'm just going to rename it. So I'm going to call it revenue. And all I have to do is type in the name and you can see it automatically updates right here. I also would rather it have a dollar sign. I don't know why it doesn't default to dollar sign. There's probably a really smart reason, but I just don't know what that is. So I'm going to go to currency and I'm going to select US dollars, because that is my currency, and that was a quick way to format it. So I've got my dollar sign now, and I've got um, comparison. And you can just change this to whatever you prefer. Now, one thing that causes a lot of people trouble um, is being able to edit the colors here, because we don't always want green to mean up and red to mean down, right? So if I wanted to, first of all, add the comparison here. The way I'm going to do that is first I have to select a comparison time. So I'm going to go over to my data panel, comparison date range. Right now it says none, which is why you don't see any arrows one way or the other, because there's nothing it's comparing it to. So I'm going to select a date. I'm just going to do previous year, just to keep things simple here. I'm going to hit apply. And it's saying that my CPC being down 60% is negative. And I don't like that because that's an improvement, right? If I lower the CPC. So I'm gonna jump over into style and you can see right here under comparison metric, I have the option of changing these colors. So I'm gonna say that up is red and I'm gonna say that down is green because when it comes to CPC, you know, that's an improvement. So this is how we're gonna change um, the colors when we want them to. A lot of them you can just keep standard, but if you're like, oh, I feel kind of uncomfortable with showing this being, you know, green when it should be red, you definitely can change that. Sometimes I'll even change things to either up or down is gray because it's all neutral to me. Like I don't want to say it's a win or a loss. I don't want to imply to my client that it's a win or a loss. I just want to keep it. Now, something else you can do if you like the idea of scorecards and you want it to be like really a card is you can go down to background and border. And here's where you can adjust, especially if you have a contrast color in the background, you can change, um, you can change the fill. I'm going to give it a border right here. You can see what that looks like. If we wanted to change the color, obviously we could do that too. Um, just jumping in here. So let's go ahead and change the color. So it's a 
light color for <laughs> for no particular reason. Um, another thing we can do is we can change how big, how much kind of real estate of the page the metric takes up in the scorecard. So we can compact the number. So when we do that, it, it brings it down. And we can also adjust the decimal. So if I wanted that to, instead of being 32.47, which is still kind of a lot, that's on auto, but I can change it to zero. So it's just going to be 32K. So that's a, that's a quick way to do it. So we've gone over how to how to add color how to add a border how to change the color of the comparison how to change the wording of the comparison and how to change the um the name of the metric that we're looking at also how to just add more scorecards so really hope this helps give it a thumbs up if you liked it be sure to leave any questions or requests for more videos in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to get more videos on how to get the most out of your dashboards and reports using Data Studio. Thanks.